The next weather pattern shift will bring some big problems. A temperature battleground will result in higher chances for widespread stronger showers and storms. This video has the latest details on the abnormal weather ahead. You can see on this animation that the jet stream is set to finally slide out of Canada and move towards the United States as we go into next week. That is going to be responsible for a pattern change to move in, in the form of a cool down. We've still got several days before we get to changes though, and I want to go ahead and play out this jet stream graphic from uh, this weather bell map so that you can see exactly what's going to be happening as we go through the next several days based on what's going on in the atmosphere. Keep in mind you can access these types of maps for yourself from weather bell by clicking the free trial link in the description. But with that being said, let's go ahead and play this out as we go through Saturday and Sunday. The big trend is something we've seen a lot of this summer and it's something that we've especially seen a lot over the last week or two extreme ridging or northbound movement of the jet stream to where the strongest energy is way on up out of the USA and into parts of southern Canada. As the jet stream is pushed north, that allows for warm temperatures through multiple layers of the atmosphere to get pushed northward all the way on up towards the U.S.-Canada border. Temperatures are going to be well above average through this weekend and into a lot of next week in the country as a result of this. There will be multiple high pressure systems at multiple layers of the atmosphere that help in driving this general ridge in the setup. One is going to be there where I just highlighted the H in parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. The other one's going to start out in some parts of the southeast U.S. Overall, the biggest high pressure is going to be kind of merging together, though, over parts of the nation's midsection as we go out of this weekend into next week. That's going to allow for storm chances to increase riding over the ridge and then starting to cascade down on the eastern side as we see stronger jet stream energy doing just that to support them. Any individual stronger pieces of jet stream energy that kind of move from the northwest to the southeast out of the north central plains, those will bring out the chance for stronger complexes of storms each afternoon and evening that could cascade down in the same general direction. Overall, that pattern will continue on and off through early to mid next week, and it will only rise more as we see that actual stronger dip in the jet stream or trough supporting that cold front that's going to move in. That cold front will eventually make it all the way on down towards the Gulf and southeast coast of the USA. This looping animation shows that, again, even as we go through the next few days, we will already be seeing some jet stream energy cascading over our ridging. That means we will already have some severe storms to watch and just some general storms worth watching as well. Let's time that out for specifically the weekend first. Here we go into the Saturday, July 26th timeframe with this European model guidance. During the late afternoon into the evening, some of the jet stream energy we see moving in from the north could fire up some stronger showers and storms in fairly scattered to widespread fashion over the Midwest, Great Lakes, and even over into the Mid-Atlantic. In those zones that I have circled, you need to be on the lookout for flooding and possible severe weather as these do erupt. A lot of this action should wane down, thankfully, though, as we go beyond about the sundown hour. Further south, we could see some spotty storms in the lower Mississippi Valley on Saturday. Those look pretty run-of-the-mill. We could see even a few later day and evening storms moving through Montana, the Dakotas, and Minnesota. Those would have a better chance of being on the stronger side, as they are under some of that stronger jet stream energy. Some of that jet stream energy from up there in Montana on Saturday will help in fueling up a possible bigger complex of storms at some point late Sunday into Sunday night in the north central plains into the upper midwest that could produce a big damaging wind hazard and we could see at least some isolated damaging wind and flooding potential once again as we see some jet stream energy moving down into the midwest ohio valley and parts of southern new england and mid-atlantic states here's a closer look at these severe storm zones to watch as we go through this weekend from saturday into sunday if you find yourself in the yellow shades up north that is where at least some isolated severe weather and possible flooding could occur at some point in time the best chance for a more significant severe storm complex to develop and move from the northwest to the southeast that is going to likely occur sunday into sunday night the area where I think the best chance of that happening is highlighted there in the orangish red shade, moving out of parts of the Dakotas into Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan. I'd be on higher alert, especially towards the back half of this weekend. And if you don't believe me, here's a closer look at a lightning animation from the European model. Those reds and pinks indicate volatile storms with a lot of lightning set to pop up. The time frame, Sunday night. From there, we will continue to watch jet stream energy increasing and storm energy in high levels as we go into next week. We'll see what that increasingly loaded atmospheric setup means for storms into next week in just a second. But here is your quick reminder now to hit that like button if you have not already and you want to support this video in the algorithm. Also, make sure you're subscribing to the channel if you're new and want more weather content that's accurate in the future. 
Now let's jump back over to this future radar overview to see which areas will look the most concerning into next week in terms of stronger showers and storms. Starting out as we go into the Monday time frame, Monday is really going to help you see exactly what a ring of fire weather pattern is. It is where we see the high pressure becoming so strong in one particular area, in this case the central plains, that the moisture in any part of the pattern is just going to be forced to move in a clockwise fashion around that system. There is a perfect circle of moisture that's going to be surrounding our high pressure system on Monday afternoon and evening from the southwest U.S. lifting up into the north central plains and then cascading down with that jet stream energy over towards the eastern U.S. There will be a possibility of storms in all of these zones. Some of those storms could be severe, particularly where we get that stronger jet stream energy moving through places like the Dakotas and Minnesota once again. Keep a close eye out further north because I think we are going to start to see our front actually organizing underneath that jet stream energy into Tuesday. You can see how that could help focusing some storms that could be severe from Montana and Wyoming, stretching out into the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, and even towards Wisconsin and Michigan. The Northeast will get some impacts from this front, but the exact concentration of showers and storms in that area on a Tuesday into Tuesday night remains unknown for now. Despite a slightly lower chance of severe weather for the time being, there will still be some generally east to west type moving storms in some parts of the southeast U.S. on the east side of our ridge, as well as some south to north moving storms in the southwest U.S. on the west side of our ridge during the midweek time frame. The high pressure ridge will continue to hold on even as we go into Wednesday, but the front will be knocking on its door from the north for sure. You can really see how that front will continue to be sinking down slowly day by day. This front from parts of the northeast through the mid-Atlantic, back through the Ohio Valley, Midwest, Central Plains, into the High Plains, all of these zones, I will be watching you guys for some isolated and scattered severe weather hazards once again, as heat will be in place ahead of this front to support these storms going severe. Out of Wednesday into Thursday, the front will continue sagging further south and east, where places like the Carolinas, Tennessee, and Kentucky could get a better chance of some severe storms directly ahead of the system. Eventually, the front will begin to try and stall out closer to the southeast U.S., still kind of draped up against where that ridge will be weakening down. Overall, it looks like the pattern will become a little less favorable for intense severe weather as we go further down the line as of now. First, though, we have to get through some of those severe weather rounds next week. Of course, I've made some graphics to simplify the areas that need watching for you. Looking at the severe zones graphic for Monday, you can see that I'm highlighting an isolated possibility of some scattered storms that could turn severe in isolated fashion, moving towards the Ohio Valley and, in general, a lot of the eastern U.S., Further to the north, though, where we're seeing a lot more of that jet stream energy riding over the ridge, that's where, once again, a new stronger round or even a complex of storms could get going into the night. That puts the biggest concern, again, over places like Montana, the Dakotas, getting into parts of Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Some of those same exact areas, as well as areas further south and east, will be in the target zone as we go towards around Tuesday, Tuesday night, and into Wednesday. That dashed line kind of separates where the Tuesday to Wednesday severe weather zone should be from where the Wednesday to Thursday severe weather zone should be. The orange is where I have the highest confidence and at some point there being at least an isolated severe weather threat through early to mid to even late next week. Eventually that threat looks to expand all the way down there towards the Gulf Coast and the Southeast as the front does so. That will especially occur I think by Thursday. It will take all the next week for that front and the associated changes to actually push our warmer than average temperatures out of the picture. Before that temperature push occurs, it is going to be downright nasty across a lot of the country through the early to midpoint of next week. The heat will be in place, and this is what's going to help fuel storms wherever we get that jet stream energy to move in. The yellows and oranges mean temperatures will be 5, 10, even 15 to 20 degrees above seasonable normals at times. The regular temperature will be getting near 100, all the way up towards the plains and the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic at times, and it will feel even hotter when you factor in the humidity. I can tell you it will be very welcome relief when that cooler surge starts making the push down by mid to late next week. Let's take a closer look at the forecasted daily high temperatures from the National Digital Forecast Database during the upcoming heat wave. As we go through the next several days, we will only see the ridge continue to build more. So as we go out of Saturday into Sunday, numbers will only continue to increase over all zones. All the way as far north as the U.S.-Canada border, 90 degrees will be very common, and in some cases it will feel even hotter than that due to the humidity. Note that especially on up here through parts of Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, and then down here through the lower Mississippi Valley in the southeast, that looks like the hottest zone for particularly Sunday, where there will be many near triple-digit readings. The heat looks very bad, though, especially for Monday and Tuesday. Look at how widespread the grayish and whitish shades are on this graphic for Monday, July 28th. So much of the central and eastern U.S. is going to be at 90 or 95 or even closer to 100 degrees in the afternoon. 
Tuesday really just stresses the tiers of where this heat is going to be the worst, though. This tier right here that stretches out of the Central Plains through the Midwest over to the Mid-Atlantic, it's definitely very hot, and you need to be prepared. Be ready to be very hydrated if you have to be outside at all. Check on your elderly neighbors. Check on your kids if they're ever outside during this heat wave. We're going to have plenty of 90s lasting at least through Tuesday in this tier. But things will begin to step down due to that cold front as we go into Wednesday. Here's a second tier a little bit further south. This is where we're going to see more mid and upper 90s than not each afternoon through the next several that kind of temperature could continue even into Wednesday afternoon, possibly Thursday afternoon. Down towards the Gulf Coast, relief might not fully come ever during the course of this event. So from Texas to Louisiana to Mississippi to Alabama to Florida, even getting on over here into parts of Georgia and the Carolinas, it could be near 100 most days into next week. The front will also take the longest to get down that far. So I'm very concerned about the heat, especially this far south. Again, during this heat wave, be making sure that you're checking on yourself, your neighbors, your pets. The elderly and children are especially the most at risk during heat instances like this. So if you can just limit your time outdoors, whether you have to be outdoors or not, just you know try to because it is just so dangerous during these kinds of conditions to be outside. There you go. You can see the cool down coming down by Wednesday, Thursday into Friday. It means a big push of 70s for afternoon highs further north, but will that relief make it all the way to the Gulf Coast? That's still in question. And it would be very unfortunate if we just stay in the mid-90s in a place like New Orleans or Pensacola all the next week. All right, let's recap everything we just talked about. Starting with, of course, the fact that there is going to be a stormy pattern erupting as we go into next week. Surrounding that high-pressure ridge, severe weather will be scattered around. The general flow of severe weather rounds is going to be moving from the northwest to the southeast as we see the jet stream doing just that. One thing that's going to help in fueling severe weather is going to be the immense heat as we see general ridging only slowly degrading as the front pushes into it. The heat is going to be very strong, and in fact, this is going to be the strongest and most long-term heat wave I think we've seen all summer for many zones. 95 to 100 plus is going to be very common until we see a cold front bringing changes at least to zones further north. With that being said, make sure you hit that like button if you have not already and subscribe to the channel to show support. That's all I have for today's video, though. God bless you all. I really appreciate you watching. Stay safe out there, and stay tuned for the next update. One Nation Web.